My name is Jason Elliott. I'm co-studio manager and also a studio engineer here at British Grove Studios. So when I was younger, I really wanted to be a famous drummer. But there was a point in time I realised that maybe I should try and find something else to do in music that I could have a career in. And my drum teacher at the time mentioned that, you know, a studio engineer was a thing. You could record other bands. So I started looking into that and I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one for me. Standout projects um, that I've been involved with. One thing I'm really proud of is I did a lot of work on the Ellie Golding record, Brightest Blue. But I was really proud of that record that we, I was vocal engineer on the, most of the A side. I first became aware of British Grove Studios when I met Joe Kearns at university. I remember walking into this room and the first time I met Joe, he was sat behind the console working on some strings. And I, was, I walked in and I was like, wow, what, it, what is this place? I, I've, like, I've seen studios, but this is like another level. My process has sort of changed over the years. Certainly, you know, come up through the ranks as an assistant. Uh, I was just helping out other engineers, other producers. And like that period of time is amazing for learning. You're watching all your sort of heroes work on music and get sounds and you're kind of like, oh, I really like that approach, really like that approach. I'm going to you know, steal that idea. I don't quite like that. Or you know, so you start to form lots of opinions on kind of like how things can sound and what you can use to achieve sounds. But British Grove specifically how, you know, it's such a well-equipped studio and beautifully put together. And it's got such good equipment. You kind of learn what things need and, and not overdo it. You learn to just use what works in that scenario. I first discovered Synchro Arts when I remember the producer bringing up or asking to install Vocaline. I was shown how to apply it to doubles and triples of a, of a lead vocal and I was, I was like, wow, like this is, this is potentially a game changer in terms of saving time. I've been doing this manually up until now. But so it was Vocaline that I started using just for getting doubles, triples and stacks to be tighter with the lead vocal. Until probably one of the Ellie projects where it was a lot of tracks, a lot of vocal stacks, and we were doing a whole record. So I was kind of hoping to find something where I could batch process stuff. So I got Revoice Pro purely for that reason at, at first. It's just to be able to visually see it all and also do it in one big go. But as I got to know it, I really realized that there was a power that it afforded you that Vocaline didn't have. And that was all the match features. You could set tolerances and create process groups. So you could select a lead and say, I want to match this lead's timing, but I want to tweak it so it's really tight or slightly loose or, and then, you know, you could also do that with pitch and you can also do that with level. And all of these things have like individual parameters that you can tweak infinitely, really, until you get the best sounding thing for that section of music. I like to split my vocals up into sections. Um, visually, I find it easier. And also for mixing in Pro Tools, I find if you have verse lead vocal on its own track and it's related harmonies and stacks, then the pre, then the chorus, easier for mixing because you can then mix in scene changes a lot easier because like verb and compression and parallel compression might suit verse one but when you move into the pre you might want a completely different texture so i program it that way and then also that's how things get transferred to revoice so all of a sudden i've got revoice matching how it looks in pro tools and also i can set process groups up for each section so all of a sudden i'm able to make the chorus crazy tight but have the pre be a bit looser. Or, you know, might, I might want it the other way around, or I might want the, the verse stacks and harmonies to be really synced in pitch, but not so much in timing. It's, it's, it's just infinitely tweakable at that point. Revoice Pro ARA functionality is just amazing. It's, it's, I've been wanting it for so, so long. It's just the way to use it before was you had to, it was a process to get it in. So it was an audio suite link plugin and you, you capture your guide and then you'd have to go through and manually capture your dubs. I had like a template session that was just like a stock, a stock guide track and like 16 dubs and I'd 
I'd transfer them all in manually to Revoice and then do my processing and transfer them all back out. So it was a very much like turn-based stepped process. Uh, sometimes that meant that things, although it was very flexible when it was in Revoice, when you were coming out, you know, you were kind of committing at that point. Um, even though you kept your Revoice Pro session saved, you could always go back. It, it just meant that if you did want to make a tweak, it suddenly was a whole in and out process again. Now we have Pro Tools, um, ARA and Revoice working together, that, that whole situation is now just gone. As soon as you engage Revoice Pro ARA in Pro Tools, it, it, it exists in both. It's like natively in the same thing. So any, any tweaks you're then making in Revoice are already in Pro Tools. You just need to sync the two together and then that's it. It's done. Thank you.